guys, I hope your week is going well. I thought it would be fun to do a video today talking about coconut oil for hair and for skin. You guys really seem to enjoy many of my videos talking about natural ingredients in skincare and hair care, and I get questions, what about coconut oil? Is it good for our hair? Is it something that can be used as a body moisturizer? So I thought I would talk all about coconut oil today. And coconut oil is a natural oil derived from the mature coconut, the meat of the mature coconut. And coconut oil has been used in many cultures traditionally for hair care and body care for many, many years. And commercially, you will find coconut oil and coconut oil derivatives in a lot of body moisturizers, cleansers, shampoos, and conditioners. Coconut oil is a ideal and interesting ingredient for inclusion in skincare products because of some of its structural features. Coconut oil is a small, low molecular weight oil, and it also is rich in triglycerides. Specifically, it is very rich in the triglyceride lauric acid, and this imparts a overall positive charge to coconut oil. It is the positive charge along with the small size of coconut oil that makes it uniquely suited for inclusion in skincare and hair care. In terms of hair care, I think where it really shines quite literally is in helping with the care of the strands of your hair. Coating the hair with coconut oil before exposing your hair to water can help reduce something that commonly occurs called hygral fatigue. I've never, I never hear people talk about this outside of the dermatology literature. I don't hear it in the lay, you know, in the public, but hygral fatigue is something that occurs on your hair shaft when you get your hair wet and then dry your hair. It occurs to a greater degree if you wet the hair and then subsequently heat, uh, blow dry it, dry it with a, with a hot blow dryer. And what it is is that the um, hair cuticle uh, gets saturated with the water and uh, then that water is then removed very quickly when you t either towel dry or blow dry the hair. And that can ruffle the outer hair cuticle and make the hair shaft more susceptible to breakage. Certain hair types are more at risk for this than others. If you have color treated hair or uh, chemically treated hair, again, it's going to be more susceptible to hygral fatigue with exposure to water. And this can result not only in hair breakage, but making your hair frizzy and just not as, as uh, cooperative with your hair styling. Coconut oil really can help a lot with that and has been actually examined and studied for that very purpose. Coconut oil applied to the hair uh, has been shown to reduce the degree of hygral fatigue by, I believe, upwards of 48% in a study that looked at submerging the hair in water for, I think, an hour. So, you know, it can help in terms of reducing the amount of hair breakage that occurs with washing your hair or, you know, if you swim in a pool or you swim outdoors. Uh, coconut oil is something that can kind of help to buffer against the damage to your hair shaft. Also, if you're somebody who colors, colors, colors your hair, heat styles your hair, coconut oil is something that can really help. And it's a combination of the low molecular weight of coconut oil and that positive charge from the lauric acid that allow it to do this. It penetrates the hair shaft very well and can help seal that cuticle down and protect it from from those shifts in water that lead to frizz and breakage. Coconut oil also has some desirable properties for skincare. It is naturally antibacterial and has been shown to inhibit the growth of certain pathogenic bacteria that can colonize the skin like certain strains of staphylococcus and it does also have a little bit of antifungal activity and can potentially inhibit the growth of the types of fungus that cause things like 
ringworm, athlete's foot. Uh, it has been examined in comparison to mineral oil uh, and has been shown to be equally, if, as, equally as effective as mineral oil and in some studies superior to mineral oil for use as a body moisturizer uh, in comparison to plain mineral oil and probably some of the studies showing it's superior. Maybe that has to do with the fact that coconut oil, unlike mineral oil, has some antibacterial properties. So if you'll recall back to my video on numular eczema or um, discoid dermatitis as it's also called, um, I mentioned how important body moisturizer use is and coconut oil is an option as an emollient. Um, it's not fantastic at decreasing transepidermal water loss and really keeping the skin hydrated, but it can definitely soften the skin and, and works just as well as mineral oil by itself. So it is often, because of that, it is often included in moisturizers and body moisturizers and many natural, you know, all natural kind of marketing around skincare might use uh, coconut oil instead of mineral oil. Uh, you know, to kind of get around, to kind of cater to the desire to use more natural products. And coconut oil is actually an evidence-based oil alternative to mineral oil. Coconut oil is actually pretty safe and low irritancy and does not appear to be sensitizing. A 2017 cosmetic ingredient review expert panel concluded that coconut oil is non-toxic, it is not irritating, it's not sensitizing, and does not appear to be a risk factor for leading to sensitization and the development of allergic contact dermatitis. While coconut oil itself is an unlikely allergen when applied to the skin, there are many derivatives of coconut oil that are used in personal care products, cosmetics, and people can and frequently do become irritated by and or sensitized and subsequently allergic to these derivatives of coconut oil. They include things like cocomethyl propyl betaine, coconut diethanolamide, uh, cocomethyl propyl dimethylamine, as well as a newer emerging class of skin allergens, the alkyl glucosides, which can be derived from coconut um, as well. It's not the coconut oil itself that is an allergen, but these derivatives uh, of coconut oil frequently are both irritating and also can potentially be sensitizing and something you become allergic to. But I want to emphasize that coconut oil by itself, just pure coconut oil, does not seem to be a likely contact allergen. However, there are some concerns around coconut oil and its inclusion in skincare products. Coconut oil actually is comedogenic and can flare and worsen acne. So while it has been shown to be a good choice as a body moisturizer for children in particular with eczema, a consideration for people who would like a more natural alternative to typical moisturizers that are recommended, coconut oil is not a great choice if you have acne. If you have body acne or facial acne, I would not encourage you to use coconut oil in those areas. It can be comedogenic. And the reason for this is that it can be just either too heavy or penetrate around the pore in combination with your oils in your, in your sebum, uh, the combination of that and the coconut oil can lead to an irritation around the pore that can trigger an acne-like flare. So coconut oil is something that is advised you avoid if you have acne. Also, if you have any kind of skin condition uh, due to malassezia or pterosporum yeast on the body. And that can be made worse by coconut oil because this little yeast loves oil and thrives in oil, actually requires oil to, to grow. And therefore, you see these rashes in areas of the body that have more, more oil glands and are oilier. So you can develop a rash on the body. Also, fungal acne is related to malassezia. Coconut oil would not be a good choice as a moisturizer or even makeup remover for you. Uh, also, coconut oil in the scalp would be a bad choice as well for anyone with dandruff because there's a lot of malassezia on our scalp and coconut oil can, in theory, 
worse than that, malassezia burden and contribute to the dandruff. So while it's great on the hair shaft for cutting down on breakage and frizz, not a good choice in the scalp. Also not a great choice in the scalp because you can imagine on the scalp as your head heats up and you go throughout your day, some of that's gonna migrate onto your forehead. And because it is comedogenic, um, it can cause theoretically an acne like breakout or what's called closed comedones on the forehead. We see this a lot. Historically, we saw this type of uh, acne like rash uh, to people in people using hair pomades. It's called pomade acne. It's a specific type of comedonal acne created by the use of hair pomades and perhaps coconut oil. You know, you can imagine it's equally that same kind of risk of an oil trickling down onto your forehead that is comedogenic that could lead to a flare of your acne. So I wouldn't recommend it for, for use on the scalp for those reasons. Not only could it flare dandruff, but also could trickle down onto your face and lead to, lead to comedonal acne and a worsening summary of dermatitis. So while coconut oil itself does not appear to be uh, allergenic or irritating by itself, like pure coconut oil that you buy, uh, like virgin coconut oil it specifically has been, is, is what was used in some of the eczema studies that, that showed benefit. Uh, while that appears to be perfectly safe and not a problem in terms of being an allergen or an irritant, do be aware that when you see coconut oil listed as an ingredient in skincare products, it may not be pure coconut oil. Uh, you know, that's kind of one of the things about cosmetic manufacturers. They're not super transparent on the disclosure of things. They can use coconut oil and, you know, maybe it is they have additives like other types of oils. So it's really hard to say, is that coconut oil in its pure form? Um, and therefore, sometimes coconut oil and products can lead to irritant contact dermatitis or allergic contact dermatitis. It might be responsible for those, not because of the coconut oil, but because maybe of some sort of additive that they're not being super transparent is present. So be aware of that. Uh, it's not the coconut oil itself, but sometimes additives and things can make the coconut oil more irritate, more likely to irritate or cause skin problems. So overall, I would say some of the best, best uses of coconut oil include uh, as a body moisturizer for people with eczema who are looking for a more natural alternative. It does have antibacterial properties, which is good for the, for the healing uh, skin of eczema. And it's also a good choice to put on your hair as a conditioning agent on the shafts though. I would encourage you to avoid putting it onto the scalp. Uh, but a good hair conditioning agent for people who, have, in particular for people who have color treated hair, heat styled hair, hair that's prone to breakage, uh, to buffer against some of the damage that occurs from getting the hair wet, uh, particularly as we're going into summer. Uh, if you swim in the ocean, the salt water, the exposure to water, and then getting out and towel drying and the heat, that can really lead to a lot of damage on the hair shaft. Consider using coconut oil, uh, you know, not harmful for the environment, and consider slathering that on your hair before you go swim in the ocean. Uh, you know, it might cut down on some of that for you. So that is, that's a good use of it. And then lastly, one other situation that I will draw your attention to that is incredibly uncommon, but I, I do think that it's worth mentioning, particularly since you guys watch me from all over the world. So I don't know, maybe this is germane to you in particular. It is a condition that I've never seen before, but I've read about it. And you only see it in South India. So I know many of you watch me from India. Um, and forgive me, I'm going to butcher the name of this. It's called Mudishud. M-U-D-I-C-H-O-O-D. Literally means heat of the hair. This is something that is seen in Southern India where there is um, kind of a, a um, desire to have, many young women like to have long, healthy hair and that's like very desired. And one of the things that is common or commonly practiced in that area of the world in particular is cutting the hair with oil. And so my understanding is in particular, women will, you know, wash their hair, the hair will be wet and they'll coat it with the coconut oil or coat it with any, with other types of plant oils. And there's this unusual uh, skin re reaction called moody shoot that can happen. It, it's only seen here uh, where it's a combination of the oils on the hair and then they have a very long hair that then sits on their back and the back of their neck. 
Uh, so that wet hair with the oil sitting on the skin in, com in combination with the heat of southern India, it's very hot there, uh, leads to this rash called moody shoot or heat of the hair. And it starts out as little kind of pus bumps that are acne-like that then heal as discolored flat top bumps. Um, and so it can be on the back of the neck, on the, on the upper back, wherever the hair is touching. It's thought to be that combination of mixing of the water, which is an irritant, as well as the oils in combination with the body oils, in combination with the heat. It just creates this weird, unusual skin rash called moody shoot or heat of the hair. I've never seen it before, but I have read about it. It is frequently mentioned in a lot of dermatology uh, review articles, and it is something that, you see, for whatever reason, it's only been reported in southern India, I guess because it's commonly practiced to coat the hair in oil. And it's not just coconut oil there either. Um, olive oil or sesame oil, I believe, has also been reported with this. So it's not only coconut oil. But you all comment below on how you use coconut oil in your skincare or hair care. I know many of you like using it. Uh, personally, I've tried using it to remove my sunscreen uh, and it works well do, to do that, uh, particularly on the body. I uh, don't have great success using it on my face uh, just because it's a little hard to apply and kind of messy. So I don't use it on a regular basis, but if you have a really heavy layer of water resistant like zinc based sunscreen that you're using when you're outdoors this summer and you want to remove it when you get inside before you hop in the shower slathering your body in coconut oil before you get into the shower is one way to help facilitate removing that um, i also don't use it on my face because like i said it is comedogenic um, but i mostly don't use it on my face because i find it a little a little messy and hard to work with as opposed to just plain mineral oil or or some of the cleanse, the Hada Labo cleansing oil that I typically use, but I know it is popular as a makeup remover, as an eye makeup remover. So comment below, those of you who use it, how you use it. But I hope this video is helpful to you guys in sharing with you some of the benefits uh, and potential risks of using coconut oil. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.